Good day, everyone. I'm Suhail Bakar from the General Surgery Department at King Abdullah University Hospital, Jordan University of Science and Technology in Jordan. It's a great pleasure and a great honor to be among you all for the second time in the Fourth World Congress of Laparoscopic Surgeons, organized by the World Association of Laparoscopic Surgeons, which I'm proudly a member of. Today, I will be presenting a review article which was published in the World Journal of Laparoscopic Surgery by myself and a great figure and contributor in laparoscopic and robotic surgery, my great teacher, Dr. R.K. Mishra. Inguinal hernia is the price paid by mankind for erect posture. The lifetime risk of developing an inguinal hernia is 3% and 27% in women and men, respectively. This makes procedures performed for inguinal hernia among the commonest in surgical practice. <coughs> the popularity of laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair has been growing. It has become the method of choice for bilateral and recurrent inguinal hernias. Mesh and its fixation have contributed profoundly to the effectiveness of repair. However, the conventional invasive methods of mesh fixation have been a major source of morbidity. Therefore, alternatives were sought. One such alternative was non-invasive fixation using human fibrine glue. The objective of this review article was to compare the effectiveness of non-invasive mesh fixation using human fibrine glue to the conventional invasive method of fixation, stapled fixation in laparoscopic <coughs> inguinal hernia repair, and point out any additional advantages of this atraumatic method. Parts of this article include significance of prosthesis in inguinal hernia repair, an overview of laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, the significance of mesh fixation and an alternative to invasive fixation, an overview of human fibrine glue, comparing stapled fixation and non-invasive fixation with human fibrine glue, and then finally is the conclusion. The use of prosthetic material has revolutionized surgical procedures performed for inguinal hernia. The use of a prosthetic mesh has significantly reduced <coughs> recurrences by eliminating what all tissue repairs have in common, suture line tension. That is, suturing together under tension structures that are not normally anatomically in opposition, which is the main etiologic factor for the majority of recurrences. A tension-free or tension-eliminating repair can be achieved either through an open posterior approach, also known as Stopa's repair, which was first described by René Stopa in 1975, an open anterior approach, the Lechtenstein's repair, or laparoscopically. The first laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair was performed in 1982 by Ralph Gerr. <coughs> Mesh was not used. Instead, the peritoneal opening of the hernia sac was simply closed using stainless steel clips. <coughs> Since the early 1990s, laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair has been performed through either a transabdominal preperitoneal approach or a totally extraperitoneal approach. Both can be looked at as Stopa's repair performed laparoscopically, as they both follow Stopa's concept. A large mesh is used to reinforce the transversalis fascia over the entire myopectinal orifice of Frochot with its multiple openings. The mesh functionally replaces the transversalis fascia, rendering the underlying peritoneal envelope inextensible. Compared to its open counterpart, laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair provides a clear view of the entire myopectinal orifice of Frechot, making the repair of both inguinal and femoral hernias possible. It also has all the advantages 
of why we use laparoscopic surgery. It is also associated with fewer recurrences and has become the method of choice for bilateral and recurrent inguinal hernias, as well as reduced chronic groin pain. Key elements to a successful preperitoneal mesh repair include proper dissection and exposure of the myopectineal orifice, adequate mesh size achieving adequate overlap with the defect, and proper mesh fixation. Whereas the most <coughs> common causes of failure or recurrences are hematoma lifting of the mesh and mesh migration. In conventional laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, the mesh is fixed using staples, so it's stapled fixation. This carries with it the risk of misplacement of staples, damaging nearby vessels, nerves, leading to post-operative complications, including post-operative neuralgia, bleeding, and hematoma formation. For these reasons, alternatives were sought. Probably the first alternative would be non-fixation. <coughs> the effectiveness and safety of non-fixation for small <coughs> and medium-sized defects, defects less than four centimeters in size, has been reported in the literature. It has been demonstrated to be <coughs> negatively associated with an increased risk of failure, positively associated with reduced risk of some of the complications associated with invasive fixation, as well as reduced operative cost. However, additional studies with larger numbers of patients and longer periods of follow-up are required for unequivocal confirmation. Furthermore, eliminating the need to fixate a mesh in patients with large defects, those more than four centimeters in size, has not been well demonstrated in the literature. So the ideal solution would be to fix, but non-invasively. One such method of non-invasive fixation is referred to as biologic soft fixation and involves the use of human fibrine glue. Human fibrine glue consists of two components contained in two separate vials. The first component is the sealant, which is a freeze-dried concentrate of mainly fibrinogen, fibronectin, and factor 13, or transglutaminase. These are reconstituted in aprotinin, which is a natural antiproteasic substance that inhibits tissue fibrinolysis. The second component is the catalyst, thrombin dissolved with calcium chloride. Therefore, human fibrine glue mimics the final step of the coagulation cascade. <coughs> human fibrine glue confers hemostatic and sealing properties independent of the patient's coagulation status. It also promotes the formation of granulation tissue, a property referred to as biostimulation. Non-invasive fixation using human fibrine glue was compared to its conventional counterpart, stapled fixation, in many regards. First, mesh migration and the tensile strength achieved between the mesh and surrounding tissue. Tissue incorporation, the ability to promote granulation tissue formation post-operative hemorrhagic complications, and post-operative neuralgia. Regarding mesh migration and the tensile strength achieved between mesh and surrounding tissue, both methods were equally effective. However, human fibrine glue proved to be superior in all other aspects. In addition, it proved to be effective in preventing local hemorrhagic complications in patients with coagulopathies. In a case control study published in the uh, journal in a case control study published in the journal of endoscopic surgery in 2008 
Chakrelli et al. demonstrated the effectiveness of non-invasive fixation using human fibrin glue. They also demonstrated a similar recurrence rate when compared to the stapled fixation. They also demonstrated reduced intraoperative bleeding from trocar site as well as trocar site pain and port site hernias. And this was probably related to the use of a 5 millimeter trocar when applying human fibrin glue instead of a 10 millimeter trocar. Regarding cost, fixation using human fibrin glue does not bring additional cost when compared to stapled fixation. It may even be financially beneficial by saving the cost of staple related complications and reducing the length of hospital stay. To conclude, mesh fixation is a key to a successful laparoscopic ingular herniography. Biologic soft fixation using human fibrin glue has always been confirmed by the literature to be as effective as its invasive counterpart with additional advantages related to its sealing, hemostatic and biostimulatory properties, mainly in the form of significantly reducing the morbidity associated with the use of traumatic fixation. From the great kingdom of Jordan, our king and queen, Jordanian people and I, would like to welcome you all to visit our peaceful, hospitable, beautiful country. And at the time where <coughs> suffering and wars prevail in the world, I'd like to convey a message of peace quoted by the great Mahatma Gandhi. Where there is love, there is life, and an eye for an eye, when only made the whole world go blind. Thank you very much.